This is a tutorial on how you can create a rolling wheel in any convex shape in Maya. So if I take this locator and I drag it along the x-axis, you can see that the wheel rolls smoothly and always maintains contact with the ground plane. And if I change the shape of the curve here at the origin, it'll change the shape of the wheel curve and it'll still roll smoothly. So I'm going to jump into a new scene and we'll build this from scratch. Okay, so to start out we're going to need a NURBS curve. So I'm going to create a NURBS circle and it's created it perpendicular to the y-axis. So I'm going to come over here to the make NURBS circle node and I'm going to change the normal from the y-axis to the z-axis. So now it's in the correct direction that we want, but I need it to have a point here at the origin, so I'm going to change the center attribute on the make nerve circle node to 1 for center y, so now it shifted it up one unit. And the last thing that we need to do is we have to make sure that the point that has a parameter of 0 is here at the origin. So I can do that by using this curve point. Uh, yeah, so you right click and go up to curve point just like you would for control vertex or object mode and then I can choose a point on this curve and get its parameter value. So here at the origin if we look up here at the name of the window it says that it is parameter 4 down here. So up here at the top is closer to 0 Okay, so it looks like this one at the top is actually zero. So all I have to do is rotate this 180 degrees. So let me turn on step snap and 90 degrees. So it's going to snap every 90 degrees. So I know we're getting 180. And there we go. Now we have the point that has parameter zero here at the bottom of the circle. And we also need to make sure that the per parameterization of the curve runs counterclockwise. So it would be like 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and then 1 again down here. So we can do that by just going into curve point again. Let's see if this is 0.25. Yes, so it looks like it is going in the correct direction. So now I can delete history on this node and I'm going to duplicate it. So we're going to name this first one Curve Wheel C Static because it's going to remain at the origin. And I'm going to name the second one Curve Wheel C Rolling because it's the one that's actually going to roll. Now I'm going to create a locator, which is going to represent our wheel's contact point with the ground. And I'm going to name it Locator Wheel C Rolling Contact Point. And I'm going to duplicate it because I also want a static contact point locator. So as this um, rolling contact point moves along the x-axis. I want this static contact point locator to travel along this curve, the same distance. So let's jump into the node editor and I'll show you how you can create that effect. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is get the total length of the static curve. So I'm going to create a curve info node and I'm going to plug it into the input curve right there. And I'm going to name this curve info wheel C length. Then what I need to do is take the distance traveled 
of this locator, which for us is just going to be its translation along the x-axis, and divide that distance traveled by the total distance around the curve. So we're going to get a ratio. So I'm going to create a multiply divide node, which I will name multiply divide wheel C length ratio. And I will take translate x and plug it into input 1x. And I will take curve, I'm sorry, arc length out of the curve info node and plug it into input 2x and make sure to set the operation for this to divide. Then what I need to do is take that value, so percent of the distance traveled along the curve, and turn that into an actual point on the curve. And to do that, I can use a motion path node, because if I turn off parametric length, it'll no longer use the parameterization of the curve, it'll use the actual distance along the curve. So I can plug in the percent distance along the curve into the u value. And also I need to plug in the world space attribute from the curve itself. And that'll get us a point on the curve. And I'm going to plug that into our static locator. I'll coordinate into translate, rotate into rotate, and I'm going to turn on the local rotation axis for it. And so as I move the rolling contact point along the x-axis, you can see that the static contact point locator is traveling around the circle. And I'm going to color these two different. I'm going to make the rolling one green, and I will make the static one yellow, just so we can easily tell them apart. Now, the orientation that the motion path is going to give us by default for this contact point is not what we want. If I go back to the origin, I want the orientation for it to be the same as world space. So what I need to do is jump into the motion path node. And I'm going to set the front axis, so the one pointing along the curve, to x. And the up axis, I would want that to be perpendicular to that, which would be the vector coming directly out at us, which would be the z-axis. And the world up vector we need to be the world z-axis and I'll jump into a different angle so we can see if that's right. And yeah, that is exactly what we need. So the orientation of that locator is correct and it's moving around the way we want it to, but it will stop if it gets all the way around the circle and it won't travel backwards around the circle. The reason for that is that the motion path node, the u value will only accept a value between 0 and 1 when you have it set to use the non-parametric length. So what we need to do is we need to take this length ratio output and use some modular arithmetic to get it to be a value between 0 and 1. And that just means that we're going to plug it into a linear graph that cycles between 0 and 1. And I know I keep saying that in a weird way, but once I have actually built the node, it'll make perfect sense. So I'm going to create an anim curve node, and I have a script that will automatically create two keyframes on it, but you could create them any way you want to. So if I jump over here into the attribute editor, you can see I have 0, 0, and 1, 1 then I can take the output x, plug it into here at the input, and take the output and plug it into the u value. And you'll notice that it did create 
some new nodes and that's just what happens if you plug an anim curve into a motion path and then what I need to do is have that anim curve selected go to windows animation editors graph editor make it linear set the tangents going in the correct direction and come up here to pre-infinity cycle post-infinity cycle and to test if that worked I'm going to take this locator drag it along the x-axis and so before it would stop if we went all the way around the circle but now I go all the way around the circle and it keeps going around again it repeats and if I go in the negative direction it repeats so that is all good now I'm going to take the curve wheel uh, C rolling so the curve that is actually going to roll along the surface and make it a child of the rolling contact point so now when I do this the curve is going to move um, along the x-axis and I'm going to turn on its local rotation axis as well so that you can see when it rotates so what we need to do to actually get this curve to rotate properly is we need to find where this uh, pivot of the curve is relative to this static contact point because if you think about it this curve needs to be in the same relative position to the rolling contact point as this static curve is to this static contact point so what I need to do is take the point zero 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 because that's our pivot for this uh, curve and multiply it by the world inverse matrix of this locator actually what I need is I need the um, to multiply that world inverse matrix by the matrix of that static circle not just the pivot of it so we won't be using a vector product node because we're not multiplying a vector by a matrix we're multiplying a matrix by a matrix so what I need to do is get the world matrix of curve wheel C static plug it in and multiply it by the world inverse matrix of the contact point locator oh, and I then what I can do is I can use a decompose matrix node to get the difference between those two matrices as transform so translate rotate and scale attributes which I can plug into our rolling curve so I can take the rotate into rotate and our translate into translate and if you look I'm going to turn on the local rotation axis for both locators and both curves the relative position and orientation of this curve compared to this contact point is the same as this curves relative position and orientation to the static contact point point. and if you look you can see that this curve is rolling so this behavior isn't anything special because this is just a circle but what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the shape of this curve into this one so that they're both identical and I'll show you that this setup works for any convex curve shape so in order to make these two the same shape I can bring in 
both of those curves into the note editor. And when I originally recorded this, I thought that I could just take the world space attribute and plug it into the create attribute on the other curve. But as you can see, it has added um, that original offset from the origin for each CV. So it's just made the circle larger instead of replacing the position for each CV. So to get around that, I'm going to create an empty NURBS curve node and plug in world space attribute into the create attribute for that curve. And then I'm going to delete this shape node for the rolling curve. And I'm going to rename the new one to curve wheel C rolling. Make it a child of the rolling contact point, just like the old one was. And make sure to zero out the transforms so it's at the correct place. And I will turn on its local rotation axis as well. And the last thing that I need to do is make that connection from the decompose matrix node again. So now we're back to the same behavior we had before. It's rolling. But now when I select this curve, you can see that the other one is highlighted in pink. That means that this one is affecting that one. I'm going to grab these three CVs with soft select and just make this into kind of an elliptical shape. And you can see that it is still rolling smoothly. I'll jump into the side view so it's a little bit nicer. Works in both directions as far as you want to roll. So let's try a shape that's a little bit crazier because this one is still symmetrical, but this works with convex shapes that are asymmetrical. So this is still convex all the way around, but it is asymmetrical. And you can see that it still rolls smoothly. If I take this locator and move it quickly, you can see that it does kind of do a jumping motion, but that's just because this point is so sharp that it has to make that entire rotation over a very short distance. It is still smooth. And that's how you can create a rolling wheel that is any convex shape in Maya.